Welcome to the Town of Air Finance Committee meeting of Thursday, November 21st at 6 p.m. at Air Town Hall. This is a hybrid meeting. This meeting of the Finance Committee will be held in person at the location provided on this notice. Members of the public are welcome to attend this in-person meeting. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation via Zoom is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast. Unless otherwise required by law, members of the public with a particular, excuse me, uh, I read that sentence wrong. The meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in a specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. This meeting will be live on Zoom. The public may access the proceedings by joining Zoom meeting ID 860-8777-1519 or by calling 929-205-6099. For additional information about remote participation, please contact Carly Antonellis, Assistant Town Manager at atm at air.ma.us or 978-772-8220, extension 100, prior to the meeting. I will call the meeting to order. Oh, um, just wanted to check is, um, Jin, are you with us this evening? Yes, I am. Very good. So we have uh, Jin Hong, a committee member, joining us via Zoom. And we have here Bob France, Eric Seckman, Andrew Seely and myself, Kurt Braskowski. No. Okay, um, the first item on the agenda is the review and approval of the October 17th, 2024 meeting minutes and November 7th, 2024 meeting minutes. Uh, I've had one change presented already. And I've proceeded to lose it. <laughs> ah, here it is. Any other changes? Why? Well, uh, I don't know if it was the change that you mentioned, Barbara, but um, on the November 7th meeting minutes, there's essentially a sentence that shouldn't be there. After the meeting was called to order, there's a question about or comment about meeting minutes, comments on meeting minutes, and that was just from an old template I had used and I forgot to delete that sentence. Okay, so on the meeting minutes from November 7th, uh, meeting was called to order at 6 or 6 p.m. Next par paragraph, Kurt asked. The next paragraph agenda item, meeting minutes? No, the, oh. the first one because it references the January 18, 2024 meeting. Oh, okay, so the second paragraph should be struck entirely? Yes. Okay. Yep. Gave me a corrected copy and I lost it. Um, nope, I just handed you what you asked Pedro to print out. Oh. I didn't correct anything or make any adjustments. Oh. Okay. Please bear with me here. Oh, you mean the typo? Yes. Yeah, um, it, it's in pen, so you should see it. Yeah, yeah. On page two, maybe? Was, but it was on the October 14th minutes. Oh, here, I got it. got it here. Thanks for bearing with me, folks. Okay, so the other correction was um, in the next paragraph on the November 7th meeting, the minutes from the typo uh, previous meeting. Um, and then on the bottom of the page, there are there are four are impacting the budget this year or next. Just a, there's a second. Oh, there are four. Items. Oh, there are. Okay, so we strike the second R. Okay. 
So that's the November 7th corrections. And then anything on the October 17th minutes? I hadn't seen any. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion and second to for these minutes? Motion to approve the meeting minutes for October 17th as of, and uh, the meeting minutes for November 7th as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, so the minutes for October 17th and 20, uh, October 17th and November 7th are approved. Um, I'm going to take a minute and uh, make a quick uh, housekeeping announcement, if you will, from our uh, IT group. Um, we should just be aware as committee members and anyone attending meetings um, that uh, the Airtown email um, it should be treated very carefully, just as you would any work email. So if you see emails from someone you don't recognize, um, if uh, something doesn't look right, you know, misspelling errors, things like that, uh, please don't click on it. Don't click on any attachments and um, would definitely uh, reach out to the IT department here at AIR to um, let them know that you have some problems. Apparently there was a uh, uh, hack email, for lack of a better term today, which was promptly caught and has been taken care of. Um, so, uh, but I think it's really always a good reminder um, that we uh, be very careful with that. Okay, uh, outside committee updates. Bob, I don't think we don't no, have the next one. No change since our last meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we still haven't had by board meet yet. Okay. Um, so rate review and by board meetings are, they'll be nothing new. Those meetings will be coming up. I know rate review is in December and I think the right. board will be announced. Um, we had a second capital planning uh, committee meeting last night. Um, and a, the senior center made their presentation uh, to the uh, capital planning board. And that has now been added to the capital planning list of items to be reviewed. So um, that is, uh, I think we've had now the police and fire, um, now senior center. And uh, so what will proceed then is the capital planning is going to have a few more presentations looking at the capital items for the upcoming fiscal year. So, okay. Um, all right. Next item on the agenda is a department head report, courtesy of the Department of Public Works. Good evening, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, Kimberly Abraham's here with me. She's the water and sewer superintendent. I don't know if she's met everybody here, but... Oh. Here's Kimberly. Here's Hi. <laughs> um, so Kimberly and I put together a brief memo, and I, I brought a hard copy, and there should be a handout if you don't have it, but it's also up on the screen up here uh, related to the status of the DPW's FY25 budget, the operating budget. And if I may mention, Dan, there, uh, you did, we got a copy of this posted on the, fine, with the FENCOM agenda. Perfect. Yeah, I'd ask Mass. Max to do that good. Um, so typically, the, um, Kimberly and I, on a minimum, review the budget monthly. We'll take our budget reports, which I know we do get from the finance department, um, as well as Mona can, and our staff can print them out for us when we need them. Um, and, and so we'll, we'll check in and see how things are looking. So um, in this instance, as shown in the memo, the general fund and solid waste budgets shown here are updated as of November 5th, and the water and sewer budgets are updated as of November 19th, so a couple days ago. Um, below are some notable items I mentioned on the memo. You know, expenditures in each, each budget 
we project them to the end of the fiscal year. So right now we're about 35% ish through the fiscal year. So we project based on say a line item, if it's $10,000 right now, we project it out another 65% of the year at, at that rate that we're already going and, and how far is you know that number gonna go. And just to kind of get a feel, are we on pace on our, you know, on our budgets? Or are we, are we you know, um, coming up short? Are we doing okay? Um, so we, that's what we do. Um, at this time, I'd say, you know, we're, we're okay. I'm not concerned um, about anything, especially it's still early on. Obviously, if, if something big happens, that's when we would potentially have an issue. But the two, um, two items I did note down below where we are currently over budget are fuel. And that's not uncommon because we actually have two locations where fuel's paid out of. It's paid out of the fuel budget, but also during the winter months, the snow budget, um, we, we pay for fuel out of that budget in the winter months. So we're, we're actually switching over to the winter months starting in November uh, to pay for fuel out of uh, the snow budget. So yeah, Max did just change the, um, the screen. So if you can see here the fuel budget right now, it's projecting out to be almost $14,000 over. We're not going to charge anything to that budget until April of next year, so it it'll it'll um, kind of level off, and we'll be charging towards uh, fuel towards snow. Uh, the other budget is the cemetery budget, and that's on the next page, highlighted in orange, and so that's close to break even. Um, the one note with that budget is in the winter months we don't have to do the lawn maintenance and, and care. Um, at that time, so for a, a little while now, we won't be charging much toward that budget, so it should also um, come back into the green. Um, so those were the, the kind of two right now that are, you know, projecting to be over budget, but um, I don't see an issue with that based on, on what we just, um, what I just described. Um, one other note, too, is there are some expenses that we get hit with, like annual fees for softwares, things like that, and those have already been paid out of these budgets. It's usually out of the DPW admin budget. We have a few there. And so in that, that budget, too, is still projecting to be under budget. So, you know, when you get hit with a you know, $7,000 up front for some softwares, it, it kind of could skew the projections of the budget, but we're still in good shape. Um, I think that, you know, that's a kind of a brief summary where we're at. Those are the bottom lines right now. I didn't want to make it too detailed with all the different line items. Um, I do have that with me if we needed to get any, any specific questions of, of that. But um, I don't know if there's anything else to add, Kimberly, on your end. Um, Kimberly does a you know, good job of monitoring the water and sewer budgets and, and maintaining those. Huh. Um, Thank you. But, um, yeah. I'll just, if you want to look at the water and sewer, Budgets. Um, next page. Yeah, thank you. So currently we're running under budget, which is a good thing. We're at 30% 30, 30 used. Um, and um, I'm, I have some reasonings for why we might have such a, why it looks like we have such a large profit at the end of the, the fiscal year, but I don't think that that's going to be the actual case. I don't think we're going to go over budget. But um, I don't think um, what is it three three hundred thousand dollars and two hundred and thirty thousand dollars is is what we're going to end up with. <laughs> um, if you'd like, I can expand on that a little bit. But for the most part, um, it's the utilities. The utilities are um, we're just we haven't caught um, they're not billed as often. They aren't always built monthly. Some of them are, are built quarterly. So that's the, the main line item, which is, um, you know, 17% spent in water and 15% spent in sewer, where we're at 35% through, through the fiscal year. So essentially in like another month, if that bill comes in, essentially. Yeah, they, it's more okay. larger chunks that come out of that budget. But right now we're looking like we're in good shape, barring any major disasters. Yeah, and um, I should point out too, Kurt, I know at the Rate Review Committee, we're monitoring the um, solid waste budget as we, you know, we didn't raise any fees, but right now 
I lost my page, but I think it was about 30000 under budget at this time. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the yeah. outs. Page with the and that one's yeah. that's pretty up to speed. I don't expect any other significant cost besides our routine operations. No one timers like a software or something. We do have landfill monitoring, but that's factored in. Who's that? There it is. <laughs> Solid waste. There it is. Yep. It's almost thirty thousand under right now. So obviously, I'll keep an eye on that as we. As we go forward, keep my eye on all of them. Mm -hmm. What about the uh, department, or, uh, the uh, sorry, equipment repair? Is that something where it yeah, so happens later in the year? Or? No, so the, the real issue there is we haven't been able to fill the mechanic position at Highway, so the wages come out of there. Oh, okay. And so right now, it's there's no wages being charged. So usually that would be a lot you know, tighter, maybe half of what it's at. We do, you know, obviously charge as we as, as we have breakdowns and repairs toward that. So some years it's worse than others, but but that's the main driver right now. Oh, okay, it's yeah. it's not that it, it's the the wages. It's yeah. Not. How are you dealing with that? If you know any mechanics, let me know. What's that? How are you dealing with that? Yeah, so. Um, right now, we've been able to work with it in-house. We have one of our guys is very good mechanically, okay. so he's stepped it up and helped out. Um, you know, I don't obviously that's not a long-term thing we want to be doing. I mean, if he wasn't here, we would be using more outside services toward that budget to, to fulfill the what we need. Yeah, but yeah. This, and again, I th you know, I think one thing I've mentioned on all of these these meetings right now is that, we, especially with the budget, we realize this is just a, a mid-year snapshot, and the the budgets do not follow <laughs> perfectly yeah. month by month. So, uh, so it's, uh, you are you're, you're going to see ups and downs and things like that. But I mean, it's it's looking good, and I think. Again, with the, uh, the uh, on the first page, I was looking at the storm water. We're looking good. I mean, that's pretty much on budget. And again, just thinking ahead that next year we're going to be look starting to do that shift to the enterprise. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, and you can tell it's it's pretty low operating budget. We've shifted most of the capital. They used to be kind of capital items within the operating. So now it's only an eighty-six thousand dollar budget, and there's a you know a lot in capital. Obviously, they all still come out of the general fund, but um, yeah, we are we are looking good right now in that budget. Okay. Any other questions on the uh, items? Thanks, Dan. Yeah, you're welcome. No, I did have um, one question. This is the other thing I was uh, hope, hoping in these sort of updates is. Um, st any other things that are on the horizons or statuses of big projects? And the one that had been coming to mind is the bridge on West Main Street. Yeah. And what is the status on that? So I'll, I'll, go to, I'll give a presentation at Capitol to give a good update oh, on it. Okay. But in short, um, it's planned to go out to bid December 13th and open the bids either late January or early February. We haven't set the opening date. But uh, the, the bid advertisement is December 13th. Um, and so, you know, hopefully we get good bids at that time and we can we can move it forward. So we, the um, utility coordination of that project has been exhausting, but, but we're, we're there. Um, so it's going out and, and we'll, we'll go. Yeah. But I'll, I'll give a good update at CAP. Okay. But you'll, you'll be there. Yeah. yeah. Good. I just know that's, that's why probably your most major expenditure on the yeah horizon. that one um you know another project we have going which is fully funded through the army is the the clear well project at the grove pond water treatment plant that's if it's a storage tank downstream of the treatment plant to to allow us to increase our treatment capacity the last few years we've had outdoor water bands because we just can't pump as much water through that plant as we used to be able to but but once we put in the storage tank we'll be in them um, in better condition um, so that project's actually going out to bid soon too, if Kimberly's crossing her <laughs> fingers. But um, so that's another uh, big one we got. But it's actually not—you don't even see it because it's funded by the army. Well, that's going to mean because you do also. I noticed we we 
you took off the ban on water a few weeks ago? Yeah. Right, we were entering winter conditions. Um, so the reason reasoning to have an outdoor water ban just didn't make any sense. Oh, okay. Um, so we decided to lift the restrictions. All right, but then as clear well as is that sort of that last item that's going to, for future water usage, is going to be able to clear clear the decks. Correct. Uh, pun intended. Yeah, right. I will. It'll... I will know that we will still have yearly water bans, but that's because of our Water Management Act permit. It's not because of the state of the water supply or anything. It's part of our permit to withdraw water that we have to implement some water restrictions between May 1st and September 30th. Yeah, the odd even that's required right. every year. Yeah. Right. Is that required by? It's by, by the, our, sorry, ahead, sorry. by the state, uh, the Department of Environmental Protection. So it's their mandate? It's their mandate. Yeah. Is that part of the stormwater permit thing? Or it's, it's not related separate. to that. Um, it's, a, it's part of our withdrawal, how much water we're taking out of the aquifer in our region. So, so the Merrimack Basin, the Nashua River Basin, you know, it's not just air taking water out of the other communities. So they got to put limits on how much you can use and take. And, yeah. Did they check that? Right. Yes, they do. Yeah, you know how much you pump, right? So. Right, right. yeah, every yeah, year. Yeah, we, we report it to them every year. That's, that's an interesting tidbit because you... No, I mean, the aquifers don't stop at the town line. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so right, because one of ours is in the Nashua Basin, the other one's in the Merrimack, the Spec Ponds, Merrimack Basin. So we're kind of withdrawing from two different basins. But, yeah. We'll have to paint that tank in like 10 years, right? No, it'll be a concrete tank, and concrete tanks don't need to be painted. The other tank you're thinking of is a steel tank that does need to be painted. Nice. That's a good question. <laughs> it may need to be power washed. <laughs> okay. Do we have any other uh, questions, comments for um, Dan or Kimberly? Um, I am going to take a moment to open uh, to see if there's any public comments on the, the, uh, for the APW group. Do we see any? Uh, Pauline? Thank you very much. I'm sorry. Click on the touching of the, you know, whatever on the screen. <laughs> I have a number of comments. I will reserve them to two. In the interest of time, you have not even discussed with Dan the impact of the potential new senior center and the DPW. And I would encourage you to do that before town meeting whenever that particular project comes forward. Kurt, I know you were at the selectman meeting the other night, I think. Or FinCom meeting or capital planning meeting, whatever. I've lost track of all of them this week. But mm -hmm. DPW is deeply involved in that, and I do believe, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, it's going to impact your budget. So I just, that's a food for thought comment. Um, and having said all that, I now forget what the next one is. Oh, no, no. With respect to the water bands, I know no one at this particular table probably follows Facebook and the AIR community page as much as some others, but people do not understand that the limiting use of water is a state-imposed mandate, not a town-imposed mandate. And maybe as you go public next year, say that it's the Commonwealth, not the town of AIR because people just don't get it. And, and and I don't know what else I can say, just a food for thought. And one last thing, Dan, I'm just gonna let you know ahead of time, I'll be back at you about flashing crosswalk signs at Capital Planning, okay? So be prepared. Very good. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, Pauline and Dan, Kimberly, did you, you take notes? Yes. Yep. Okay, uh, any, anyone else? If not, thank you very much, Dan and Kimberly, for the, taking the time to come. Yes, thank, thank you. you, thank you guys. Yeah. Yeah, we'll great. see you. Good, yeah. Okay.
Um, the next item on the agenda is financial reports. Um, I believe Kerry going to. We've we've had this on the agenda the last few meetings and just gotten sidetracked with other items. And so, uh, okay. Hi, chair and members. Um, so we welcome Kerry Cooper. So. What you're seeing here is basically it is on the town manager's uh, web page under department head reports. Um, every, every month um, it will be updated for the previous month. So we are looking now right here at the October report. Up in the corner you can see it says 2025 period 4. So basically it's going from period 1 to 4 July because we're a fiscal year, so July to October 31st. Um, what we're seeing here is by the totals of de by department, which is known as an org. So as you can see, the, like for the moderator, for instance, our revised budget, um, year-to-date expenditures, encumbrance, available budget, and the percentage that is used through the month of October. Um, is Max doing the... Changing. I can, okay. Ready for the next yes. Week? So if you keep going down, you can see it goes through the first several pages are for the omnibus budget. Um, and basically that is all that it has been put on the the um, web page except for the stabilizations per request from you mem you folks. Um, so I'm not really sure what else you wanted from to know about the f budgeting. Um, it's very self-explanatory, just like the DPW was. Basically, the Munis report will emphasize your revised budget, your actuals, and your available for the remainder of the year. Um, May I? Yes. Just to say, so at budget season when we have that big spreadsheet that um, we do the budget and mm -hmm. have all the um, different meetings and stuff. She, Carrie then takes mm -hmm. that final loaded on budget and imports it into mm -hmm. and then yes. the year she monthly shows how much has been expended every month. And that's posted out on the website under the uh, department head reports. She posts this every month. Okay, so this is um, right now, um, you know, I've said and I just haven't been, and like I said, I'm sorry, I'm a little discombobulated this evening. Um, this is available on the manager. It's under the town manager's department head reports. Okay. Um, and if there's questions um, concerning if, as you see, like under the transfer and adjustments, the why, the reason why it has a revised budget is because that was encumbrances from the prior year. So basically what that would be is state supplies were um, ordered, but we did not receive yet. They were ordered before the end of the fiscal year, but if we haven't received them, we are not going to process an invoice because procurement laws, Chapter 30B, we cannot do that. So they will encumber the money from the prior year and put it in the fiscal year when we receive them. And it is very common to have a service and you haven't received the invoice yet. Or the haven't received the supplies because they're on back order, especially with the COVID, we, we had a lot of back orders, so. So how is it reflected in last year's budget? So it is reflected, so basically what this is, is we basically reserved the funds. It came out of last year's budget. However, we're expending it in this year. So that's what that transfer and adjustment is basically the encumbered amount from the department that we will expend this year. So it's a carryover. Exactly. Exactly. And this is for, this is looking at the fiscal year, July 1st, 2024. Through, it is June 30th, 2025. correct. Yes. Okay. Fiscal calendar. It's fiscal year. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> Gets me every time. 
Can I ask what the Conservation Trust is? So the Conservation Trust is a stabilization fund that basically was... So they established a trust fund it was prior to me starting here and the, um, they well, funded $500,000 and created a conservation trust. And this is the balance as of the end of October. It's, it's right now just been earning earning funds, investment Correct. and interest. I assume that's about $22,000. That's that. That was actually the interest. What's it for? So that would, that's a good question. Um, would probably be a good question, a good um, thing to have our conservation agent come in. Oh. Uh, but I know they did establish a trust so that the conservation they could purchase or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's similar to you know we have stabilization, we have capital stabilization, mm -hmm. and it's to put money in in case something comes up that they need to use it for. And yeah, so if you see this, this is a conservation trust, and I, I'm sorry, I'm a number person, so like I would say it's fund 84, um, and then 85 is basically the stabilization fund, and then 86 would be our capital stabilization fund. 87, correct me if I'm, that is our OPEB. Yep, see, I'm getting good with my numbers. <laughs> and then 80, oh, that's okay. So 86 is our capital stabilization fund. And then 87 is our, our OPEB, which is retirement benefits. And then 88 would be our compensated absences fund. And what did we skip? Wasn't, is it, don't we have the regular stabilization fund? Correct. Funds? That is actually 85. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So these are the, the four quotes my word and accountants will <laughs> cringe when I say that um, the set aside funds correct because we've done a great job in the mm -hmm. town of air uh, okay so staff save stabilization is for regular um, general purposes mm -hmm. capital is it's for, for capital purposes. correct and, uh, and then the OPB OPEB Yes, that is our post retirement benefits. Post -retired benefits. Right. Having been in the retirement business, mm -hmm. and I know some other folks are aware of retirement business. This is <laughs> this is such a great thing mm -hmm. because pensions are chronically underfunded. Correct. The, this is set aside, but this is above and beyond our regular pension mm -hmm. funding. Yes. yes. This is for post-retirement benefits, so your mm -hmm. health insurance and ah, other okay. benefits. And so it's not the normal pension that you could pay at retirement. That's through Middle Middlesex County, County retirement. retirement. Ah. Oh, okay. So then this is for um, other post-retirement benefits. Okay, health and what have you. Okay. Okay. And so hence other post-employment. Employment. Benefits. Yes. Benefits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I always wonder every town meeting, I'm like, yeah, I other post employment. <laughs> and then yeah. the no, eight. I think, I think, Eric, this is this is sort of one of the reasons that we sort of want to ask for this is like, this is great that we're getting to learn and know this stuff is that we, if we now know about it. Correct. It's at your fingertips every month. Yeah. Exactly. Under her, uh, and department head report. Yes. And then 88 is basically our non-compensated uh, non absences for the people that actually retire or they get the vacation buyouts. This is what this fund was established for because this was established because we had so many retirees at one time. How many, how much would $73,000 cover? It all depends on how many people retire and how much vacation buyout they have. So the town's goal is to maintain a balance of at least $65,000. And it's really only used if when somebody retires, the payout of their uh, vacation will cause a hardship in their budget. Okay. Um, so it, it, it is a circum, depends on the circumstance. If they can afford it in their budget, we would take it from their budget right. and not use this.
I have a lot of silly or stupid questions that, uh, because I'm going to ask for an education. Um, the stabilization fund is the money that's uh, surplus from year to year. Is that correct? So the stabilization fund is part of our financial policies. It is a goal to have at least 7% of the operating budget put into a stabilization fund for to be used in, in, in the event of something catastrophic to help stabilize the budget. Got it. And how does this get applied, in other words, if we need that money to be... It would be voted. It has to be a two-thirds vote at town meeting to That's use that money. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, and then um, uh, what was the other thing I wanted to ask? Bear with me here. Um, oh, the reserve fund. What is that? The reserve transfer fund. Can you give me the, um, the, the number affiliated? Yeah, that would be the reserve transfer fund. Yep, that's that. the reserve transfer fund. That's basically if there is an emergency, um, if one of the departments is in a deficit and has an emergency cost, it has to be for an emergency purpose only. Um, 01132, Barbara, right there. So what that is is we budget a certain dollar amount. In this case, it's 150000 So towards the end of the year, if a department's going to go un, um, over, over budget, budget due to some unforeseen circumstance, they can ask for a reserve fund transfer from that into okay. their department budget, and that is something that you as a finance committee approve ah, at the end of the okay. year. Yes. I see. Yep. Okay. And it's solely, had, our, it's solely our vote? Yes, it, it is. It is, and it's it's basically, and it has to be for an unforeseen circumstance. If, if you know, like... AC broke at the fire station, I think. Exactly, and we had that... Um, for the t IT last year, if you remember correctly, we had all the email exchanges that started costing a lot of funds. So um, Cindy put in a request and it was approved. Okay. okay. Thanks for the education. Of course. I, I have another question. Sure. Um, the uh, unrestricted cash, which I think is also referred to as free cash, Maybe not. I don't know. Unrestricted what cash. Are you on? Free. Oh, that's two. UDAG. So UDAG is a totally different ball of wax, if you'd like to call it. It's um, I don't. It should be the last page. So UDAG is it's yes. an urban development, development and agricultural grant that yes. the town received many years ago. So when the town back, I believe it was in the nineties. I'm I think not it was sure 80s, of the dates. Yeah. Um, the town was able to assist with the development of the town of Air, and then if those grant funds were not, uh, like if a company or a home sold, for example, then those any any balance due on that grant that wasn't forgiven at the time came back to the town. So these are funds that were brought back to the town as a result of this grant. Mm -hmm. And that we use this for the um, economic and uh, economic and it's used development. For economic development, development and the development of air. Under the select board, right? Yes, that is under yes. the select board's purview. Correct. So are you saying is this where the money for Allen's office? The that that Some of the economic from? development, their budget is made yes. from this grant. Yes. yes. So half of it is in our omnibus budget, and then half of it will become will come out of the UDAG money. Um, speaking of, there was from COVID. What was the money that we had? The ARPA that, funds. The ARPA funds. We have used all the ARPA funds. ARPA funds has all been, all has been reserved um, to date. We are waiting on uh, several contracts. We have until December 31st to get those contracts. Um, but as of today, the select board has approved all of the money to projects or expenditures. Correct. Right. And that's, and that was part of the 
the, the government programs yes. after, during and after COVID. And as I remember, we actually had to use it by the end of this year. We have to have it reserved. It has to be obligated well, okay. uh, by the end of this year, and then we have two more years to actually spend it. it. But we, we really don't have very much unspent. We do not. Very little. I, I believe it. we're ranging, I want to say, we have the Jonathan Dry project that has not been expended, but we have a contract for for $25,000. We have some consultation fees that I believe right now that we, it's $6,300. And then we have the non-comp survey that is a $10,000. That, that's the only one that we are still waiting for the contract for. So we do not have a lot out there for so we're our in very good shape. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. It's not that much money left. I have one last question. I had a question I'm sorry. Too, Please. No, I, I, I had a debt question. Can you go okay. to the debt service page? Mm -hmm. I just didn't know if there was a, a historic oh, percentage one of the overall budget that we try to maintain as the debt service, right? Like, the last few, last year, right? Fees, the rates have been pretty high. I know you do a good job of buying back your, your rates when you can. But I just didn't know if there was a, or the retirement of debt line, right? It's a reasonably large line item and we borrow every year, right? And well, yeah, AIR does historically borrow every year, um, at least a ban, which is a temporary borrowing. Um, and, but, but yes, historically AIR has gone some sort of borrowing and we do try, as part of the capital committee, one of the things um, I'm actually preparing for a future meeting is to look at the debt that's coming down. And we do try to, you know, take that into consideration when uh, um, allowing other capital items to be approved. So that you don't have these very big spikes of debt and then these big decreases. You want to try to have it maintained. Maintain. That's the goal. I assume there's some sort of historical level to try to maintain. It's like a you know, so, I mean... Uh, it's when a bridge so comes debt, up, you debt, can't really avoid. Yeah, I mean, our debt levy ceiling is 5% of the equalized value of the town. Um, so our... our so that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's our debt ceiling. But there are certain circumstances that you can borrow outside that limit. Like, mm -hmm. usually there are things like infrastructure needs that don't apply to that... Um, mm -hmm. Ceiling. And so, any of this, <clears throat> the debt, the debt that we're paying on has been gone through the whole process of capital planning, select board, town meeting, and uh, and, and then, then borrowed for. And then borrowed. Correct. For, right? So the. The, everything that happened for FY25 at the town meeting in last April, Barbara has not gone out to borrow for yet. Yeah, so historically, in normal circumstances, I borrow in the spring. Um, so at the end of the year, so as long as you have that funding before June 30th, assuming we have the cash to cover expenses up until then, which at this point we do. Uh, so I do watch that. So yes, yeah, so the debt that's on here is for fiscal 25. It is not um, including any debt service for the capital items that were approved last year. That won't Correct. hit the budget until fiscal 26. Correct. So how much is the sorry, the sorry 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 uh, I mean, we can borrow up to 6.5%, but what is the percentage for debt as our annual budget right now? And and how much do we pay in interest each year, roughly? Just, just a ballpark number. So I, I, I don't know the percent of the whole budget off the top of my head. I can get that for you. Um, it's a simple calculation of taking the fiscal 25 debt line and as a percentage of the whole budget. So if you took the whole $18.9 million budget that we have for the omnibus budget and you divide you know, the annual debt service, you could come up with a percentage pretty quickly. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so what is our end 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 I'm still looking at this. So uh, 1.408 million. Oh. Okay. And then you have the interest. Cover. No, yeah. that's the whole, that's, that's including that's interest. That's interesting. Okay. So it's basically 1.408 divided by roughly 18. Yeah, 18.962 million is our omnibus budget. And this is just our omnibus budget debt. The enterprise funds have their, their, their own. Their own. Yeah, I, I off the top of my head, I'm not sure what the percentage is. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you, Jen. So, so you mentioned that the the town tries to maintain a goal of seven percent of the operating operating budget in the stabilization fund mm -hmm. do we have a similar goal uh, for the capital stabilization fund so the in the financial policies the capital stabilization goal is 10 percent of the amount of that's in stabilization we are over that um, for the last at least the last five years i've been involved in the budget we've had we've used, deposited from free cash and added to our capital stabilization so it's supposed to be 10% of the stabilization goal. So if you take your 36, um, $36.5 million total budget for the town, including you know, the school assessment, and you take 7% of that, you come out with a number, and then the goal in the financial policy is 10% of the stabilization goes goal to, to be part of the Cape capital. Um, that is the way the financial policies are written, and it, it's a pretty standard from what I've seen across municipalities. Um, I don't have them in front of me, but that is the... May I suggest, uh, Eric, uh, as, uh, and I'm, I'm directing this to you as, as keeping of the minute, keeper of the minutes, um, these, so you had your question you had, Jen, you had your question on the debt percentage, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, yes, yes, yes. I, I can read more of my own. Well, well here, here's what I'm suggesting. Uh, and again. We need to have a uh, So just a quick thing, if you don't mind me. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Mr. No. Chair, so yes. the current year's fiscal 25's budget is $36,560,514. Um, so if you took that time 7%, the stabilization minimum we'd want to have is two million five hundred and fifty nine thousand, and we're we're over that. And then if you did ten percent of that, according to the financial policies, you want to have at least um, about two hundred fifty six thousand in capital stabilization, which we are well over. So we've surpassed our minimum goals, which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. So, well, what I what I was throwing out is that. Um, If you have time, or again, I can help with this, is that we can circle back mm -hmm. and just make sure we have the accurate answers to our, uh, like I think it's three questions, your question. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, <laughs> but what I'm saying is we wanna make sure we have it in the minutes correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so because then we have, because these are great questions and at least, and this is, I think part of, um, sure. this is a, what a nice thing we're doing for the town is that we're asking, I think, questions that yeah, people at town meeting go, oh. <laughs> if you have some questions yeah. ahead of time, then I can make sure I have the answers. Um, right. right, but then, but but these are coming up. Um, so make a long story short, is if we can just circle back and make sure we've got um, the, the accurate answers in the minutes. And again, because again, we're... So does that, that sound okay, Eric? Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. So I'm just going to recap. So you had your question, um, the, the you, Jin's question on the percentage of debt. Um, and again, what I'm saying is, don't try to figure out just a second. Let's just circle back and uh, our, and then you had your what was it percentage of debt? That's your percentage of debt. Okay. It's, uh, Okay, great. Um, anything else? So, 
Um, I'm going to open it uh, for public comments. Any questions? Pauline. Pauline. Hello again. I want to again tell you all you've done wonderful job tonight analyzing all of this. I'm sure none of you had any idea what you were getting into when you uh, offered to serve on the Finance Committee. Uh, I would like to ask Barbara to make sure that all of the documents that the committee reviewed tonight are on the agenda because none of what you have displayed on screen share is on their agenda. The DPW documents are, and I appreciate that, mm -hmm. but everything else you've talked about has not been displayed to the public. And I would also like to suggest, Kurt, that you spent, you and your committee spend a night looking at those financial policies because while there are criteria or suggestions for uh, allocations, to the capital and stabilization funds. There's a lot of money that goes in there that could be used to offset the omnibus budget. And I will share more of that later at capital planning. But we sock all this money away into free cash, the free cash money into stabilization funds, which then requires a two thirds vote of town meeting when we might be able to buy something like a crosswalk sign that would stop somebody from being hit by a car. And that sounds trivial, but Kurt, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So just please all keep that open-minded. Um, but there, are, you, you all, the committee, really needs to look at those financial policies. And I thank Barbara and her people for putting all these numbers together. I know it's not easy what you do. And I, I for one, as a taxpayer, appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, may I say one thing? Yes. Um, these, again, I, I really want to emphasize to the public and to everybody here that the all of these reports that you are seeing tonight are under the town manager's page on the department head monthly reports. It's very important that the town knows that those monthly reports is not just from the finance part, but it's also for the assessor, it is for the tax collector, it is for the planning department. It's not, it's, it's really useful information. So it's very important, it's just, it's just a click right under the town manager's web, uh, under, the, under the his page. Okay. Mr. Oh. Chair, if I might respond. Um, yes, Pauline. Thank you, sir. I agree with what was just said, but if you are conducting a meeting and, and discussing these particular reports, it is required under the open meeting law that you provide these specific reports for the meeting, whether they're available on the town website or not. Everybody on the public side doesn't know where to find this, this stuff, and if you're going to be discussing something, you need to make it available to the public at the time of the meeting. Can we refer to it by link? Can we post a link on the agenda? Absolutely. Well, it, it is available to the public because we have an open meeting. So it is available. As long as there is a link or a paper document for people in person, but you must at least reference it somewhere on the meeting post. And if you don't want to accept my conversation on that, just go ask Robert. I have this conversation with him on a regular basis. At least post it as a link on your agenda, and that's all that I'm asking. May I, Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Barbara. So yes, absolutely. We can post it. We can ask mm -hmm. our IT person to post it right after the meeting. Uh, this was kind of a last minute pull up um, for the presentation. So. Absolutely. And it was basically just to tell them how to read the, not actually go over the numbers. Thank it was you. more how to read the, uh, the financial reports, not actually to go over the numbers. Absolutely, yes, yeah. so we're good. Yeah, and I, that's, I would like to summarize um, the conversation we just had about the reports is that this is a brand new thing that the mm -hmm. Finance Committee has for this year. So, thank you, Barbara. And, uh, yeah, and thank you, Pauline. Uh, so we're, we're in a learning stage mm -hmm. here. Sure. Yeah. 
what's the best way to do it. And um, we, um, again, have to be uh, aware of all, making sure that the information is available. Um, we have to make sure we're following all Absolutely. rules of this, uh, this state as far as um, mass how general reports laws. are, mass general, how reports are displayed and everything. Yep. And I think the one thing I definitely want to emphasize that these are, um, and again, all this also ties into the department head reports that we've been asking for. These are snapshots. This mm -hmm. is mid, mid year. And we just thought as the finance committee, it would be nice to be able to say, Hey, let's just look at how the town is doing on various things mid-year as we go along. Um, so as within any snapshot or mid-year report, they are not um, the, what's the best way to say this is, they aren't the final numbers. They aren't, no. this, is, this is a moving thing. Again, this is just uh, an opportunity to take a look at things. And may I just, may I? Yes, you? please. So again, with, when you see some of the percentages used, similar to what Kimberly was talking about, there's certain line items that it doesn't happen every month. They, there's payments throughout the year, maybe be two payments a year or four or versus every month. So you, that's why you'll see the, the percentages then uh, vary. vary. And back to the fuel, that was one of the incident, you know, with the fuel um, line is a a lot of times the they get billed quarterly. Yeah, so just to point out that if you're looking at the percentages, that's why they vary so much. So yeah, so going forward, if you'd like any clarifications at a future meeting, just put me on the agenda, or carry on the agenda, and we'll be happy to um, attend. Okay. I hope we answered your questions okay tonight. Mm -hmm. And I know now um, Carly is actually sending you the reports via email. To correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. So she had sent me October's, which is the one we were mm -hmm. looking at. So we would be in another few weeks and looking at November. Correct. Wonderful. Yeah, and I, th I think uh, as a, um, uh, maybe at our next meeting, we can uh, uh, review how we want to look at these reports going forward. So, sure. so but this has been. It's a learning curve for us, too, because it is something new to to make sure we're giving you what you need or would like to see. So as we proceed, we can sh sharpen that and get a plan in place for future years. Thank, any other questions? Or no. Thank you very, very, very much. You're very welcome. You, you have been, you've helped me over the, and I know the committee members have, have asked you questions. Appreciate that. Thanks. So I'm just staying at the table to finish with helping with the computer. Okay. You guys can mosey on as if I'm not here. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Right. Oh. Okay. Harry. Um. So next thing is schedule the next meeting, which will be. I'm popping over from my calendar, and I, I noticed uh, I'll come back to that. So uh, I have be the, fifth. the Thursday, December 5th at 6 p.m. Sounds good. Okay. okay. Um... The last thing on the agenda is public <coughs> comments, uh, but I did offer, we opened uh, to public comments for the department head reports and financial reports. I will th open it one more time for any other public comments. <coughs> okay, hearing none. Um, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Oh, All right. those in favor? Aye. 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 So we meeting is adjourned as of 7 p.m. Thank you very much.